What is recursion? Beginner programmers often get caught up on how recursive algorithms work rather than developing an understanding of the basic underlying principles. If you take a step back from all of the code and focus on how recursion is implemented in the real world, you'll gain the intuition and understanding required to both read and write recursive functions. But enough preamble, let's actually consider an example. Say I want to find my camera, and I know that it's in either of these two backpacks, but I can't recall exactly which pouch I placed it in. I need a process, one that does not change throughout my search, in order to find my camera. That process will simply be revealing an area and looking within that area, and if there are other areas within that area, I will need to repeat the process for each area. So, for example, if I unzip my first backpack's small pouch, I can look within that area, sure, but I will also need to do the same for the case, as well as the inner pouch. How many times will I repeat this process? Until I find my camera. After all, I'm not going to stop opening compartments and sleeves until I find what I'm looking for, which, in programming recursive functions, is considered the base case. The base case is the condition which causes us to stop repeating the process. So, I have a feeling that I left my camera in my camera bag, so I'm going to start by searching there. Once I open the front pouch, I'll need to search the area. Since I don't see my camera, I'll need to proceed by unzipping another area. Since my camera isn't here either, I'll have to keep looking. Even after looking in the other, more concealed areas of the front pouch, I still can't find my camera. I will now move on to the center pouch, which, when opened, reveals many different compartments and, since I think like a computer, I'm going to consider each compartment until I can identify my camera. If I start with the top left compartment, I'll find a couple of batteries and battery chargers, of which are helpful, but certainly aren't my camera. If I move on to the next compartment, I'll find a camera lens, which still isn't my camera. I'll repeat this process from left to right for each compartment, noting four more lenses until I get to the bottom left compartment, when I'll see a microphone. If I move on once more, now I will find my camera. If this were a recursive function, my base case for finding my camera would now be true, and I would stop searching. You may be asking yourself, how does this represent the principles of recursion? To which the answer is surprisingly simple. Since I'm unaware of my camera's location, I need to develop a process which will help me find my camera. That process is simply searching an area and checking for my camera. If I cannot find my camera, I can simply repeat the process until I do. That sort of repetition, until I meet my base case, is exactly what recursion is. Okay, let's take a look at an example in Java. With Java, I can write a recursive function to evaluate the factorial of any positive integer, which, if you recall, is simply the number multiplied by all of the integers below it, excluding anything equal to or less than zero. So the factorial of 3 would simply be 3 times 2 times 1, or 6. I'll start by defining my method to return an integer, the result. I'll call my method factorio, and I'll ask for the integer parameter n. I'll define my base case first, which will be n equals 1. I want to stop multiplying when I reach 1, since you cannot take the factorial of numbers less than 1. Once n equals 1, I'll return 1, which, after all, is just the factorial of 1, since 1 times 1 is 1. Now I'll write my else if statement, and I'll run this block when n is greater than 1. Whenever n is greater than 1, I will need to call this function again. Why? Well, the factorial of 5 is 5 times the factorial of 4, and the factorial of 4 is 4 times the factorial of 3, and so on. So for this I'll return n times the result of calling factorial n minus 1. And one last thing, I'll add an else statement in case 0 or a negative integer is passed in for n, and for this I'll simply return 0. Just to be clear, this is not part of our process for finding a factorial. It is simply there in order to avoid a stack overflow if it receives a negative integer for n. And that is our factorial function. If I call factorial with n equals 3 from somewhere else in my code, it will first return 3 times the factorial of 2, which will return 2 times the factorial of 1, which will return 1. 
By simplifying the problem into other, smaller problems, Java can evaluate the factorial of any number. If you're interested in testing this for yourself, I'll leave links to the source code in the video description. Also, be sure to give this video a like if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Finally, thank you for watching and please be sure to subscribe.